Hey everyone, welcome to a little covalence demonstration of killing two birds with one stone. If uh, you probably don't know, but we're actually in the process of updating our learning management system, Gravity, and it's completely and utterly chaotic right now. It's completely under construction, so you're gonna get a little bit of glimpse into that and what it looks like in its current state, not pretty. But we do need a progress bar right now, and I figured it'd be kind of a cool little exercise to show everybody part of this process and building this progress bar that I kind of had in my head. Um, one of our other guys, Luke, you probably know him, Cool Hand Luke in Discord, he uh, he actually sent me something like a cool idea for a po potential progress bar, and so we're going to build it right now. It's uh, using a framework called Platypus TS, which almost nobody knows about. There's only about 30 people in the world that know about it, and so you're probably not gonna be using this framework, but you're going to be able to use the code that we create pretty much anywhere and uh, you know, make your progress bar similar and maybe even better than the one that we create. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you end up creating a super cool progress bar based off this video, send it to us and show it off because we would love to fe uh, feature you and show it off as well. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up the actual coding folders that we need. So let's see the source code, template controls, and the way this framework works, it uses a framework called Platypus TS, uh, platypusts.com if you want to check it out. I wouldn't suggest it. There's not a lot of support behind it, but it is a very cool framework. Only about 30 people in the world probably even know about it. Um, but it uses uh, dependency injection to create controls and uh, it'll actually inject this HTML as its inner HTML of the control itself. And then it would actually use this as this JavaScript to control the element. And so it has functions like show, hide, and then we can inject this into views and the views can call those functions. Very cool. And then it applies these styles here. So this would be the outer element and then these would be the inner elements. So let's go ahead and create these inner elements. So let's say progress BG. And then inside this, we're gonna say progress bar. This will actually be the element that moves back and forth or just forward, however we want to, however we want to do this thing. Um, so let's see, at first we're going to just kind of have it go from left to right, like a little flat line, you know, medical flat liner. Uh, but let's go ahead and just get things kind of rolling here. So progress PG and then inside that element, we're using a SAS so we can actually embed the CSS like this. Um, super convenient. And the parent element of everything, we're actually going to need to apply some styles to it. So we're gonna say position absolute, we're gonna put this in the nav bar. So the upper nav bar area of every page is gonna be actually controlling the progress itself. So position absolute, uh, we're gonna say left zero, bottom zero. And we are going to say the height is 0.1 m it's gonna be tiny, kind of tiny but i like it i like it low profile um and then let's see height and then width is going to be 100 percent all right so then the progress bg is going to be height 100 percent width 100 percent um we're also going to do position absolute and left zero top zero and then the progress bar is also position absolute. Um, and then it's, let's see, it's height is going to be 0.3 M. It's gonna be a little bit bigger, right? And so the difference in here is going to be two M's, right? The difference between this height and this height. So we're going to say left zero top negative 0.1 M's because we do the difference divided by two if we want it to be equal. So negative 0.1 M's here. Uh, and then the width, we'll say 10%. So it's gonna be 10% of the parent. So the actual thing that slides across is gonna be 10%. And then we will scale it. But to start, we want to say translate X, negative 100%, and then scale, uh, let's do 0.75. And this negative 100% actually applies to the width of the element. So it's saying negative 100% of the width of the element, not the width of the parent, which is a little bit different than uh, some other like left values and things like that. And so this is saying it's it's actually relative to the width of this element, right? So it's 10% of the parent element, but 100% of itself. So it's pulling this completely off the screen to the left. And uh, 
we have to create an animation and we have to deal with colors. So let's do the animation first. So we'll say keyframes, progress line, and we'll say 0% is uh, transform. It's basically this exact same thing. So we can just kind of copy this. And then 100% is going to be transform uh, translate x 1000% and scale 0.75, right? Because um, basically this would be 10 times the width. The width is 10%, so 10 times 10 is 100. 100%, you know, would be the total width. So um, a little simple math for you. And then, well, let's type right. Let's see, the translate x here, if we want it to be about halfway, 1100%. Um, is the additive here and so 550 550 plus negative 100 is 450 and then let's scale it to 1.5 all right so we can add this animation here and whoa let's not do the autofill uh, progress line um, let's see 1.5 seconds and we will say, let's do linear first, just to see what it looks like, and then infinite. We'll have to apply it over and over again. And we're not using uh, vendor prefixes here because we're actually using a preprocessor, and it does an auto, pre it uses auto prefixer, I believe. And so that'll actually just auto prefix things like dash webkit dash. But if you're not using a preprocessor, you're not doing anything like that, no transforms, that kind of thing, um, I would suggest using a dash webkit dash animation. So you know, I'm sure you've seen this before, you know, dash webkit dash animation apply those exact same things, dash moths, dash animation, those kind of deals. And so that should allow you to, uh, you know, more properly target every browser. And let's see, so the other thing we need is colors. Now we could apply colors in here, but we're using Tailwind. If you haven't used Tailwind before, highly suggest you look into it. There's actually, we have a whole video series on using Tailwind with Next.js. Uh, take a look at that if you want to get a little glimpse into how to use it. But basically, um, we're going to use those classes to uh, keep things consistent. So this is saying that it's going to be blue 500 at 25% opacity. Um, this is going to be BG blue 500 at full opacity. And then we're going to apply a box shadow and a shadow blue 500 at 50% opacity. Now, we could have applied these styles here as well. Uh, we could have applied a lot of these with Tailwind. Um, Tailwind provides a ton of classes for basically doing all of this, but I figured uh, for instructional purposes, purposes and because you may not be using Tailwind or you may not be using a framework of any kind, I wanna try and make this as universal as possible. And I'll make sure that you guys also understand how you would use this if you weren't using you know, Platypus TS, which 99.99% .99 of you are not gonna be. Uh, so again, we're gonna make sure this works real quick and then we will, um, you know, make sure that we can actually apply these things. So let's open up a new window real quick. Uh, and we're going to go to localhost 3000 slash portal. Now this is under construction, obviously, um, but we're going to go to this page, which is the profile page, and we're going to need to load it, or keep the loader on the page. So let's go to the portal itself. We're going to say, uh, let's see, not portal shared and profile page profile VC, which is the view control. And when it is navigated to, we call this get user function, which calls the progress show function, does a bunch of stuff that's asynchronous, and then it actually hides it. So we're just gonna remove this real quick. All right, let that compile. And we are going to pull up this page again. So it's why it's compiling. Sometimes Webpack can take a little bit of time with these larger projects. But all right, so it looks like we got a nice little start. It kind of looks a little boxy. So let's go ahead and add a border radius to this. Um, let's go back to our SCSS and we're going to add a border radius to this right here. So border radius, let's say 50%. Let's take a look at how that looks. Well, probably is not gonna like that. All right, it's building. All right, so that definitely looks better. I like that look. Um, that's kind of a cool loader, to be honest. I've never actually built a loader like this before, so I am with you guys in terms of trying to decide if I like it or not. Uh, I kind of like it. Let's see. 
Um, I kind of want to see what it would look like if we went back and forth though with it instead of just continuously you know, going one direction. So let's go ahead, pull the code back up and we're going to change the animation itself, right? So basically the 100% is now gonna be the 40%. Um, this is gonna be more like 20%. And then our 100% is just going to be back to the original. And we need a, a 60% that's going to be basically this, right? So that would probably be the easiest way to do it. And then 1.5 seconds is a little, let's try two seconds here. Let's give it a little bit more time. All right, so it's building. All right, that's kind of cool. Kind of like a little pong action. Um, let's try it. Let's try a different timing function. Let's try uh, ease, ease in out. It's kind of cool. It's a little jarry. I think I liked it linear better. We're going back to linear. All right, so one more time. I do like this, it's kind of pongy. Uh, we can play around with the actual percentages here because we didn't actually make these percentages equal, right? We have zero, 20, 40, 60, and then there's a 40% gap in here. So if we wanted it to be a little bit different, we could change those values because the way back is a little bit slower, right? But I kind of like that. I kind of like how it, it quickly goes forward back and then slows down at the end. So it's almost like it's, you know, it's shooting out and then kind of coming in for the landing. So again, hope you guys liked this. Hope you guys learned something and hope you guys can try this out and, you know, really kind of mess with it yourself and change these values up a little bit to kind of make your own loader. Um, but just for consistency sake, and just so that you know, because I know, again, you probably will not be using Platypus TS. Uh, the way that this works is if we go to the portal nav here, portal nav itself has HTML. So this is the element right here, right? So this element is now, it injects this HTML into that element. And then this CSS is applied to that outer element. So if you wanted to use this in your own HTML file, let's just create, you know, a fresh HTML file here. Basically what it would be if you had, you know, a div uh, and the way that you know this is writ, it would be plat control equals progress, right? So basically, it would be like that. If you wanted to apply the exact same styles, if you wanted to literally copy and paste that, right? It would basically be this, and then this HTML would go inside of it, and then this control right here is what you would actually. Uh, paste in there, right? You can actually change this. You can make this a class and then, you know, change this to be a class and then apply all these same styles and it would work exactly the same. And then um, obviously hiding it and showing it and that kind of thing, you would basically start with, uh, you know, the way this works is that it actually uses this class hidden, which is a tailwind class. And so, you know, you can actually start with hidden on the element here, right there. So it wouldn't be shown. And then you could just add and remove this class here. Now using whatever framework you're using, if you're using something like React or um, Vue, one of those, you could actually easily do that using the controls itself. But again, that would create the exact same effect as what we're doing here. And if you guys have any, you know, recommendations, or if you come up with a really cool control based off of this, let us know because we'd love to feature you and show off, you know, some of the cool controls that you guys create. All right, until next time. All right, so there you go. There's creating a quick and simple little progress bar. It's an indeterminate progress bar. Now it's not actually, you know, showing the progress amount, you know, zero to 100% of the loading time. It's just loading indeterminately when you don't know how long it's gonna take. And it's commonly, a lot of people use spinners, but for our LMS, we wanted to use something more of a line up in the nav bar. And so that's what we went with. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you learned something and hopefully you can create something super cool for your projects as well. Definitely subscribe if you hadn't already and definitely let us know if any part of this video didn't make sense or if you need additional help with implementing this progress bar in your own project. All right, everyone, until next time.